courtrooms are meant to be places of order and accountability, but sometimes they become the stage for unexpected escapes. Don't believe me? Just look at this inmate simply walk out. Escapes can range from meticulously planned heists to spur-of-the-moment dashes for freedom. Some escapees nearly killed themselves in the process. Others almost caused the death of the trailing officers. And believe it or not, there was a case where a judge caught up to an escapee. In this video, we'll look at 15 of the craziest escapes ever. On May 10, 2021, Rashad Hawkins escaped a courtroom in Meigs County, Tennessee. He was there because he did not pay child support. Rashad's behavior in court was shocking. After being sentenced to jail, he decided to escape. From the second floor of the Meigs County Court, he bolted out of the courtroom, hopped the rail, jumped to the ground floor, and ran away before anyone could react. A manhunt began, and Hawkins was on the run for 20 days. On May 30th, 2021, he was seen trespassing in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Patrol officer Blake Darland from the Harrodsburg Department responded to reports of a man trespassing in backyards and found out Hawkins had an outstanding warrant from Tennessee. Hawkins tried to run away again, but Darland caught him, leading to a struggle. Hawkins was eventually arrested and charged with several offenses, including criminal trespassing, fleeing the police, assaulting a police officer, possessing drug paraphernalia, menacing, and resisting arrest. He was held at Boyle County Detention Center without bond, while Rashad Hawkins was facing a relatively short jail term, the next escapee was staring down a life sentence before running. On February 28, 2023, 28-year-old Eli Villalobos, a murder suspect, escaped from an Oregon courthouse. He was about to stand trial for several felonies, including the 2021 stabbing death of 33-year-old Artemio Guzman Olvera. Security camera footage showed bailiffs as they removed his shackles, which is required by Oregon state law to prevent jury bias. As soon as the shackles were removed, Villalobos bolted out of the courtroom. He sprinted down a hallway and exited through an employee's only door. His actions triggered an extensive manhunt. After a two-hour search, police found Villalobos hiding under a blanket in a nearby apartment closet. A neighbor had called 911 to report a break-in. Villalobos was arrested and later charged with two counts of first-degree burglary and one count of second-degree escape. The next entry is a middle-aged man who defied all odds by escaping from a wheelchair. Joel Delgado, a 41-year-old inmate, escaped from police custody near the Pulaski County Courthouse in Little Rock, Arkansas, on March 7, 2022. He was facing charges of theft, burglary, and possession of firearms. Delgado made his escape while being transported in a wheelchair. Delgado had told deputies he was injured and went to the hospital for evaluation. On the day he escaped, he was being taken to court in a wheelchair. Suddenly, he jumped out and ran, using the courthouse railings to get a head start. The officer chasing him didn't have a radio, making it hard to call for backup right away. The deputy's body camera recorded the entire incident, including him chasing the suspect on foot through the streets of Little Rock. He searched, even asking pedestrians for assistance. Hey, call the police! Call the police! Which way he go? Afterward, he returned to the courthouse, hoping someone there had spotted the suspect. After Delgado had escaped, a manhunt began, and he was found a few hours later on West 65th Street. Police arrested him and added charges for the escape. Officials reviewed video footage of the incident to assess if any changes were needed in inmate transfer procedures. The following escapee showed incredible timing to outsmart the officers. Diego Jose Zaya Martinez faced charges of making terroristic threats and stabbing a man. Outside the courthouse, he and other defendants were being taken to the county jail after his bond hearing, where bail was set at $100,000. Watch as the deputy escorts the men to the bus. As they were escorted to the bus by deputies, Martinez, like the other defendant, wore handcuffs but had his feet free. He attempted to escape, slipping away just beyond the reach of a deputy. The officers pursued him immediately, but one stopped and stayed behind with the remaining prisoner. Zeus Martinez reaches the parking lot with a deputy close behind. To avoid being caught, he picks up his pace, managing to stay ahead despite the deputy's attempts to intercept him. He jumps a fence, appearing to escape freely. However, later that day, a citizen informs a deputy that Martinez is hiding under her house. Martinez is apprehended and taken back to the courthouse, where his bond is increased to $500,000. He also faces an additional charge of third-degree escape. While some officers failed to stop the inmates, the judge, in the next entry, succeeded where the officers failed. 
On October 16, 2018, Tanner D. Jacobson and Coday L. Howard, both in handcuffs, attempted to escape from Judge R. W. Buzzard's courtroom in Lewis County, Washington. We were sitting there on the benches together and he's like, he's like, I'm gonna run. I said, what am I doing? What did I just do? I gotta go with it now. There's nothing, I can't stop right here. There's nothing I could do now. I'm, I'm screwed. The two inmates were facing charges, including reckless driving, driving with a suspended license, burglary, and trafficking in stolen property. However, it was a normal, uh, I think uh, one was in on the first appearance on a new charge, and the other one was in on a for failure to appear, so we were setting conditions of release. But The inmates are not interested in these conditions, as both men took off running from the courtroom, with Jacobson in the lead. Judge Buzzard, showing remarkable bravery, removed his robe and gave chase, sprinting down four flights of stairs to catch up with the fleeing inmates. He managed to grab hold of Howard just as he was about to exit the building through an emergency door. Jacobson, however, managed to escape the courthouse and made it a few blocks before being apprehended by authorities. It was just a split second, like, decision. I don't even know why I did it. Like, I would be out of here if I wouldn't have ran. I didn't try to escape to get out. I tried to escape to get well, and I tried to do what I could, you know, do what I could do to get my drug addiction. The incident, captured on national TV and surveillance video, sparked discussions about courthouse security and the need for additional armed guards. The two inmates were charged with second-degree escape. Jacobson's bond was set at $100,000 cash, while Howard's was set at $50,000 cash. The next escapee pulled off a cinematic-style breakout. On December 16, 2015, Gerald Hyde II, a 24-year-old inmate held for drug charges, escaped from the Benton County Courthouse in Washington State. He used a blind spot in the corridor to slip away from the guards. The surveillance video captured Hyde returning to the empty courtroom. where he used his prison shirt to cover his handcuffs. He then ran through the room, kicked off his orange jail shoes, and sprinted out the front door. Hyde escaped, but was caught just a few hours later at a friend's apartment two miles away. He was charged with second-degree escape and given a sentence of two years and two months in prison. After this incident, the Benton County Sheriff's Office enhanced its security measures. They adjusted the placement of corrections officers to remove blind spots and implemented a policy to keep courtroom doors locked when the court was not in session. In the next case, a murderer orchestrated his escape with the assistance of his family members. Dwayne Cheney is a convicted killer who escaped from the Milwaukee County Courthouse during his murder trial in October 2017. He was facing charges for fatally shooting Michael J. Prescott Jr. During a courtroom break, Cheney is seen in the sweater vest outside the courtroom. He knows the prosecution's key witness will appear within 24 hours. He is free to move inside the building because he has a GPS tracker on his ankle. Cheney had asked for a speedy trial, but since the state couldn't schedule it quickly, he was allowed to post a bond and be under house arrest with the anklet. Surveillance cameras capture Cheney with his girlfriend, Zuri London. After a few minutes, they separate, and Cheney talks with his father, Frank Kyles. They leave the hall, moving out of camera view. About a minute later, Cheney leaves the building, trying to escape. He's removed his vest and casually walks with his father outside the courthouse. Notice a van pull up. All three quickly get inside. Outside the courthouse, he's no longer wearing the sweater vest and walks casually with his father. After a few moments, Zuri meets up with them. A van driven by Cheney's mother, Florigenia Cheney, arrives, and they all quickly get inside. Cheney removes his GPS anklet and throws it out the window as they drive away. Cheney's escape sparked outrage, particularly among Pastor Rosalind Prescott McClinton, the mother of Prescott. She expressed fear, knowing her son's killer was now loose. She remembered Cheney's final words to her, I'm going to be free, you can't hold me down which now seemed like a warning of his escape. His trial continued despite his absence. Cheney was convicted of first-degree intentional homicide and faces a mandatory life sentence. He was found hiding in a garbage can near Silver Spring Drive, while his girlfriend, Zuri London, was discovered hiding under a nearby porch. Both were arrested. Cheney's mother, Flora Gina Cheney, was also taken into custody for allegedly assisting him in fleeing. The escape drew attention to Cheney being released on a signature bond, meaning he didn't have to pay any money up front. Judge Carolina Stark made this decision and received criticism for it. Later, it was explained that state law doesn't allow a judge to delay a trial if the defendant asks for a speedy trial, even if prosecutors aren't fully ready. The next escape almost resulted in the death of an officer. 
On September 22, 2020, Nicholas Garrison, a 34-year-old man, made a daring escape from the Highland County Courthouse in Ohio. During his sentencing for a felony meth possession charge, Garrison, who was facing up to a year in jail and a $2,500 fine, broke away from the bailiff and ran out of the courtroom, with several officers in pursuit. Dramatic video footage of the incident shows Garrison running down a flight of stairs with a deputy diving headfirst over the railing in a brave attempt to tackle him. Unfortunately, the deputy crashed into a wall and tumbled down the stairwell, suffering a concussion and four broken ribs. Garrison was able to escape and went into hiding. A search was conducted, and tips led authorities to a motel in Clinton County, where he was found and arrested a few days later. He faced additional charges related to his escape. While Garrison nearly caused the death of an officer, the next escapee came close to killing himself during his attempt. On May 4, 2018, Christopher Clay Rudd, a 35-year-old man facing drug charges, attempted to escape from a courthouse in Spanish Fork, Utah. Rudd, who was handcuffed and wearing a yellow prison jumpsuit, calmly got up and walked out of the courtroom. When officers chased after him, he started to run. Surveillance footage captured the entire incident. One camera inside the courtroom showed Rudd walking out, while a second camera in the hallway captured him running and jumping over the balcony. A third camera showed two men trying to catch him as he fell in the lobby. Rudd tumbled head first over the railing, rotating in the air as he fell about 20 feet onto a tiled floor. Rudd suffered a broken leg and pelvis and a fractured skull. Police were unsure if he was trying to injure himself or if the dive was a last-ditch attempt to escape. He was taken to the hospital for treatment and was not in a life-threatening condition. Rudd was due back in court and faced additional charges for the escape attempt. The following entry features a Russian who closely resembles he who must not be named. Leonid Grazer, an 18-year-old Russian man accused of murdering his sister, attempted a daring escape from a Moscow courtroom in December 2019. While inside a glass-walled box, Grazer saw an opportunity to climb through a hole in the ceiling. In a video of the incident, several police officers can be seen reacting with shock as Grazer clambered out of the box and into the roof space above. The officers tried to grab his legs, but Grazer managed to shake himself free of his trousers and continued his escape attempt. Backup officers were called, and Grazer was eventually pulled down from the ceiling, losing his trousers in the process. He was then handcuffed to prevent further escape attempts. Grazer later confessed to the murder of his 21-year-old sister, Ariada Corol, claiming that he was ordered to kill her by Satan or Lucifer. Prior to the murder, neighbors reported hearing Corol screaming in the hallway of the apartment building. Her naked body was found with multiple stab wounds and ritualistic, demonic symbols drawn on it with her blood. Grazer was also witnessed undressing and drawing similar symbols on his head with his sister's blood. He was arrested while praying and asking to be freed of Satan. The next escapee made his bold attempt after learning he would be spending the next five years in prison. On October 4, 2018, Rayton Woodford tried to escape from a courtroom in the Jefferson County Circuit Court, Louisville, Kentucky, after learning he was being sentenced to five years in jail for violating his probation on weapons and drug charges. Probation revoked in its entirety. Mr. Woodford, I'm going to send you to serve five years. Good luck to you. A video camera captured Woodford's escape attempt, which began with the camera focused on an empty witness chair. Woodford can be seen jumping in front of the camera, with shouts and screams heard in the background. Woodford's girlfriend, who was in the courtroom, screamed. She then tried to stop him from escaping. Lock the door back there. A sheriff's deputy and a police officer managed to stop Woodford, but he got back up, so an officer had to tackle him. The officer suffered an arm injury during the chaos. Woodford was eventually subdued and brought back to the courtroom in handcuffs. He was then charged with resisting arrest, second-degree escape, third-degree assault, and fleeing from police. Judge Willett noted that the record would show Mr. Woodford tried and failed to escape. He also said that in his 19 years on the bench, he had never had an inmate attempt to leave the courtroom in such a manner. Well, that's a first in 19 years on the bench. <coughs> she did tackle him on the way out. Are you okay? Mr. Woodford made an unsuccessful attempt to escape the courtroom and he was apprehended by law enforcement. The next entry involves a teenager who plots his escape with a friend, all to go play snooker.
On February 19, 2018, a video was released showing a teenage phone thief escaping from Bradford Youth Court with help from 21-year-old Callum Finter. The teen, whose name is withheld for legal reasons, was sentenced to 21 weeks in custody for stealing a mobile phone. After the teen was sentenced, he pushed past four security guards and fled through the door. CCTV footage showed Finter pressing a button to open a locked door, allowing his friend to flee. The teen made it outside the courthouse and managed to escape the cops. A few moments later, Finter can be seen outside, probably on his way to join his friend. The teen spent two days on the run before being arrested and sentenced to an additional six months in detention for the escape. Finter's lawyers claimed he triggered the button spontaneously and not as part of an escape plan. Finter told the court that he was there to support his friend, who he believed would be released after the hearing. He also said that the plan for the day was for the pair to go and play snooker. Judge David Hatton told Finter that even if there wasn't a pre-planned scheme, he was sure Finter expected what eventually happened. Finter was jailed for three months for aiding and abetting his friend's escape. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced at Bradford Crown Court. This next entry involves four teenagers who committed a series of unbelievable crimes before their escape. On November 30th, 2019, four teenagers escaped from the Juvenile Justice Center in Nashville, Tennessee. The teens are 16-year-old Decorious Wright, 15-year-old Calvin Howes, as well as Morris Marsh and Brandon Carruthers, who were both 17. They were left unsupervised when their supervisor, Patrick Jones, left to respond to a fight in another part of the facility. Surveillance video of the escape was released, showing the teens running through the hallways. They made their way outside and escaped the facility. Three employees at the facility were fired and four others were suspended pending an internal investigation. Three of the teens were recaptured within days of the escape, while one, Brandon Carruthers, remained at large. A $12,500 reward was offered for information leading to his capture. Authorities eventually recaptured him on December 12, 2019, at an apartment complex in Antioch, southeast of Nashville. He had evaded the police for two weeks. Carruthers was found with a male and a female, later identified as 20-year-old Brandon Calderon Sotelo and his girlfriend, 19-year-old Catherine Woods. Both were charged with being accessories after the fact and facilitation of escape. An AR-15 rifle and boxes of ammunition were recovered from the apartment. Carruthers was already facing an armed robbery charge in adult court. Investigation revealed that Supervisor Patrick Jones allowed the teens to leave their cells after the lockdown hour to perform cleaning duties, even though three of them were ineligible for work detail due to low behavioral scores. Jones also failed to secure the elevator, which the teens used to escape and did not notice that they were unsupervised when he passed them. Jones was arrested and charged with facilitating the escape through recklessness. He was released on bail and initially faced a $10,000 bond. Another employee, Alexis Beach, was also arrested and charged with facilitating the escape through recklessness. She was responsible for supervising the teens on the night of their escape but left them unattended to respond to a fight in another area. She was also held on a $10,000 bond. Three other employees, Sierra Wilson, Jar Piers, and Tierra Fox, were fired for their roles in the incident. The next escapee made his break for freedom after being sentenced to just 90 days in jail. On June 4, 2019, 33-year-old Jason Mendoza Cordero tried to escape from a courtroom in Rochester Hills, Michigan, after being sentenced to 90 days in jail for retail fraud and disorderly conduct. The bold move was captured on courtroom surveillance footage. Cordero, who noticed there were no deputies around, simply walked out of the courtroom just as a deputy was walking into the courtroom. Judge Nancy Carniac, who had just sentenced Cordero, did not realize what was happening and a court officer ran after him. Cordero sprinted across a nearby road and into a wooded area. Area, but was recaptured within five to ten minutes. Cordero faced additional charges of escaping lawful custody and resisting and obstructing a police officer. Finally, we have an Australian man whose escape attempt resulted in injuries to several sheriffs. On September 15, 2020, 35-year-old Daniel Nicholson tried to escape from the dock at Christie's Beach Magistrates Court in Adelaide, Australia. He was facing charges of carrying and possessing illegal weapons, stealing a motorbike, and torching a car. After Magistrate Susan O'Connor revoked his bail, Nicholson became furious. He overpowered two officers, jumped over the dock, and landed on a table. A police prosecutor tackled him, and although Nicholson broke free briefly, he was restrained again and dragged away in a continuing struggle. Two sheriff's officers were injured in the 
the incident. One suffered a broken foot and had to wear a moon boot for six to eight weeks. The other sustained a clicking jaw and a headache. Nicholson was on meth during the escape attempt and had a history of drug abuse. His lawyer said he had struggled with drugs for a long time and was truly sorry for his actions. Nicholson was charged with escaping custody and recklessly causing harm to the sheriff's officers. He was sentenced to one year, nine months, and 18 days in prison with a non-parole period of one year. If you enjoyed this video, click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos.